your media where you are. The jack of all trades, wearing a different hat when the moment arises. You're on all the time. Always on the clock, always catching up. <sighs> Take care of you. Introducing your your media where you are. Come first, your media where you are. The show goes on with Noni, brings the business of the arts to center stage. Hello, hello, everyone. We are back. Happy New Week. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Winter is here. Hi, everyone. My name is Noni Mkanto, Spear of the Nation. <laughs> you are tuned into The Show Goes On with Noni on your platform, your media, hashtag where you are. And I know you guys know. <laughs> I know you want to know where she is, but you can hear her giggling already. <laughs> Mugel, yeah. how you doing? I read a meme this morning that says black people always get uh, shocked about how cold winter is. <laughs> Hi, 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 hi. Yeah, man. And now there's that meme going out saying, Can someone please tell Ringo but when he was recording this song, he was not this cold? Hello, Girai. Doesn't Girait. Hello, hello. My name is Balisa Robin. Welcome to the show. Goes on with Nani. Right here on your media hashtag where you are today. Yay. Boga got to tell nobody. It's a king. Yes, and in studio today we have Justice Mukeri. Aye, did I say right? Yeah, Justice yeah. Mukeri. Yeah. Yes, I said it right because we always want to get things right. Yeah, we uh, always, uh, always want to get things right. How are you doing, Justice? I'm good, thanks. How yeah, are you? I'm good, thank you. Welcome thank to you. the show goes on. Thank you. Um, we are very happy to have you here. I'm very <laughs> happy to be here. I just want to say before we start, like we were having conversation with Justice outside. It's my first time meeting him, and yo. <laughs> I'm in my feels already. Like <laughs> he speaks, and I don't know. I, I mean, if you're watching, if you're gonna watch the podcast, you might just see like these eyes, and it's gonna look like I'm in love. But that's because this man has just gone into my soul because he speaks with such poise, and then oh no, and then oh, I didn't turn that. I like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's like he's like a, a, a you know when you're listening to to Joe's <laughs> songs on a Sunday, <laughs> like he puts you in that space. In he your really field. puts you in that space in your fields. Justice Mukeri is a South African Mukeri. artist. Mukeri, Mukeri, uh -huh. is a South African. I think I'm abusing the R. No, that's okay. Mukeri. 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 Yes. Yabana guys, since you have been already because we are in our fields. <laughs> Justice Mukeri is a South African artist, filmmaker, who creates commercials and fine art films. Mm. Okay. Yes. So yeah. we are talking to him about his journey into his um, photography, his art, his filmmaking, him being a creator. Um, so Justice... Please tell us, would you be happy? Yeah. When were you born? How yeah. were you raised? Let the people know you. Yeah. So, I was born in Chiawero. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, this is the first time you would try to be Yeah, I'm going to be Chiawero. Yeah, because uh, people pronounce it in their dialect. So you probably pronounce it in Zulu or yes. you pronounce it in Sisutu. Yeah. But Chiawero, it's a vendor name. Oh, okay. You know, so that's how we pronounce it. Chiawero, which means a resting place or where you relax. Okay. You know, it's so. family there. Yeah. Until today. 
so yeah, I was born in Chiawero uh, to uh, beautiful parents. Yes. You know, my mom and dad, they both Venda. Okay. Um, my dad was grew up in Venda and he came to Chiawero. My mom was born in Chiawero. Yes. And yeah, I grew up there. I've got a twin brother. Uh, the loveliest human being. There's two of you. Yeah, there's two of us. Yes. Uh, my <laughs> yeah, my twin brother inspires me so much. He's amazing. Uh, he's very energetic, loving, expressive, super talented, and so positive with his outlook to life. Yeah. So it's been a blessing to have that as my best friend from day one. Yes. You know, and. Um, yeah, we've got an elder brother, yeah. Chirizi, yeah. Gerald, um, and a younger sister, Ruzani. Yeah. Um, yeah, both our siblings are amazing. Um, yeah, our mom is my source of inspiration. Uh, I learned so much from her. Yeah. And yeah, grew up there. Then we moved to Pimville. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. also did the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, Pinville is where I realized my connection to art. Okay. Uh, my parents are both artists, but that didn't live out their dreams or that it didn't come to fruition. Okay. Uh, because of the challenges of this country. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even think they got to a place where they saw the possibility to pursue it. Yeah, so Th though they knew they had this talent. They yeah, knew. definitely. Okay, all right. Yeah, my mom is an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. So is my dad. Um, my mom, everything she touches, she's so versatile. Mm. And I learned so much from her. You know, I, I learned the importance of not limiting myself through seeing her, her and her life and her outlook and how she just led her life. You yeah. know, she's multidisciplinary. You know, um, yeah, even beyond art, she's good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, then I grew up in Pinville. I went to school there. Um, then I went to school in El, El Dorado Park. Okay. Um, and at some point, much later, I went to Athlon Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Athlon. <laughs> yeah. That, to me, was the most amazing experience. Yeah. Because a boys' school helped me lean into myself. Okay. And not, without influences of trying to be cool for girls. Ah, you know, okay. so I could completely be me unapologetically. This is what I mean. Like, this is how he speaks. Yeah. Who says that? <laughs> without yeah. the distraction or the influence. You know what I mean? Like, that is beautiful. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I had a very beautiful upbringing in, in Soweto. Yeah. Yeah, the moments I, I experienced there with my friends, love I experienced, um, my upbringing, you know, playing, my best friends, and everything that I experienced there is an opposite of what Soweto is known for generally and it was uh, quite uh, beautiful you know and it shaped me it shaped my outlook to life and it's still to date a resource for my creativity yeah because all my lived experiences there inspire everything i do you know so it was really really amazing uh, yeah do you uh, think the way you you view it and how you you speak so poetic about it. Mm. Yeah. Um, you speak with so much love about even your family. Like, yeah. you are in love with your family. It, it, there's no other tell, way. I can tell that, yay, if anybody tries, it's it's trouble, right? Yeah. If anybody says one wrong thing, it's... So do you think you, 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 you maneuvered in that sense? It's because of the, the discipline and just the can I say, the love of art that your parents had that molded you? Because I feel like when you have creative parents, they are in tune with their emotions mm. and they also allow you to express. Do you think that it started from home and um, how you maneuver in life and then carry it on? Yeah, definitely. It started from home, you know. Mm. 
And without a lot of words, uh, or any words from my mom, seeing her, how she led her life yeah. was inspiring. Mm. Now that I'm here looking back and seeing how that in, had a huge influence in my choices and the s steps I take with my own life, yeah. because my mom uh, leads everything with love. Even challenges that are hard for her or yeah. someone does her wrong, her response to that challenge is love. So, uh, you know, having grown and realized myself mm -hmm. and being present in my own life and being present to the decisions I need to make and how I lead my life, I had that resource to look into which is my mom and the lived experiences I've had with her and seeing how she engaged the challenges that were tough, yeah. but her response to them was love. You know, I, I, I was able to choose that, you know, yeah. to say, okay, even though some things could be challenging to me, I don't have to fight fire with fire, yes. you know, okay. and I'm not a perfect human being. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up, Amongst my siblings, I was the fiery one, you know, and <laughs> Rendani is the one that's going to deal with them. You know, yeah. I can fight. If someone is starting with my brother or my sister, I'm the one that's going to deal with it, you know. Yeah. But obviously, when you grow, you realize that some of what you choose to be, that felt like it's naturally who you are is influenced by the community around you. Yeah. And you can still make your own choice to say, this is not who I am. This mm. is who I am, you know? Yeah. And having grown, I was able, after doing the work or during doing the work, I was able to say, okay, this is who I'm known for. And this is what, the community around me say I am, yeah. but this is not me, you know, yeah. and I choose who I want to be, you know. So, yeah. yeah, I think my upbringing and the work one has to do as they grow quite helped me, you know, especially having my mom and my my dad and my family, you know, my elder brother and my younger sister and yes. my twin brother was so amazing because the interactions we grew up having fuel the decisions you know yeah. that i make now because i can say i remember my brother was a bully or whatever it was you know yeah. i can look at that and say and make a choice that this is what i don't want to be mm. you know yes you go on, yeah. you get older in life. Yeah, even yeah. in friendship, friendship, you know, I, I went, we went, my twin brother and I went to a school in El Dorado Park and we are Venda and Venda, Chivenda is the smallest recognized South African tribe, True. right? So everyone around me didn't want to speak my language. Yes. And I knew that no one will if yeah. they're not Venda because everyone frowns upon it, you know? So I grew up with shame. Then when I went to a school that was inclusive of all the other tribes, no one would speak our language, yes. right? Okay. But I was able... This is when you got to Ethelon now? No, okay. primary school, primary school okay. in El Dorado Park. Okay. You know, but I was fortunate that I had my twin brother to look into. You know, some people don't have that. Mm. You, you, you know? still stayed grounded mm. and, and still were able to express yourself because yeah. you had your twin brother with uh, you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes yes. it would be challenging that there's a language barrier and I don't know how to speak Zulu or Sutu. Yes. And when I speak, they would laugh at my your accent. Because accent, yes. kids are mean. Yo. Yo. <laughs> you know? But I even forgot where the thought was going. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's my upbringing. That's, that's your... It's beautiful. The way you speak about it, it's like I paint the picture of his upbringing. You know, when you bring love yeah. into how you grew up, because we yeah. always put the traumas of growing up first. We yeah. always put uh, the things that went wrong first yeah. when we grow up. Yeah. We never look at the, 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 the things, the it. beauty of everything that yes. has happened to us and uh, being mm. with our siblings, it, it's not perfect, but mm. because there was love, everything seemed 
poetic yes, as you said exactly. so i just i i yeah got your work mommy so like i i just want to un- know mm. you it, it seems like you grew up in a very present home um yeah you guys were present in each other's lives yeah i mean my my family is a normal family it's we were not different mm. entirely i think i mean maybe if there's any difference in my family is my mom you know she's got superpowers she's really incredible and how she led her life and how she parented us is so beautiful if i could do half of that for my own children in the future it would be amazing yeah you know so in that sense yes we were present but that guidance was from my mom you know and when i turned 12 our father left so we were left with our with our mom and she stepped up you know she became our father better better than most fathers you know and superpower yeah she she's got super i've got great respect for women because she had to raise three boys yeah three yeah. boys and a daughter and she did a great job you know i never once felt like there was yeah i needed my dad yeah you know i mean i love my dad completely yeah. but when he wasn't around it didn't Mom feel like up. the house needed a man okay because she was man enough <gasps> you know and she was also mother enough you know her kindness you know and her love and her passion in raising us sure inspires me because i can't imagine how many men would be able to do that when they were faced with a situation like, like that, that. Yeah. you know mm. then you hear another conversation but you hear the world pushing back from the idea of a country led by a woman and all households that make these men are led by women you know yeah story for another day but <laughs> I'm just like I'm going to yeah. let him go on because I'm <laughs> loving what I'm hearing. No, um, it's a fact. Yeah. It's 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 a reality that I think patriarchy challenges, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And it has no grounds to stand on because even those men pushing back and building the idea that women are less than us they are men because of women when they yes, go home they exactly. are groomed and they who supported do they cry on? Who, yeah. who do they cry on who raised them who raised who, them who exactly. Raised exactly you know who does it become small to uh, yes. not another man no you know <laughs> but it's it's a very layered um conversation yeah. to have which i'm not scared of yeah. but definitely so, women are definitely <laughs> stronger by far there's no comparison even myself i can't box half of me or 10 of me can't box <laughs> with half a woman yes. you know because half. Half yes woman. yeah completely <laughs> i mean women create life right yeah. Yeah. would i <laughs> even if I, i i had the intention to it would never be the my reality to yeah. carry life for 9 months yeah i mean my mom carried two two and dudes. one two dudes at one time yeah <laughs> and <laughs> raised life. them and re- yes and loved them yeah and loved them and traditionally and fathered them yeah with two other dudes <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. You know, so yeah. then you uh, you hear someone challenging the idea of women leading a country and they say women are emotional and yeah, it's yeah. so would they say that about their mothers? No, they wouldn't. They'd be actually offended if you spoke that way about yeah. their mother. So just as um your talent, you yeah. know, storytelling, your I mean, do, you know, you paint, you paint I do. You paint you're an artist, you're a director, yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. Um whilst your journey in school, mm. how did it happen that you then decided that this is what I'm going to do for a living? Like yeah. I'm going to 
take my talent, my creativity, and I'm going to tell stories and, and bring it to life. Was that in high school? And then when you left, did you decide are you going to go study or you didn't study or let us know yeah, that, so, that so journey. I had no idea about a career in creativity. Okay. Even in high school. Until maybe I was in grade 12 and they did an aptitude test type of thing. I think maybe that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out with students, what's your strength, what careers you could go into and yeah. all of that. And mine was, they said I could be a designer, an artist and all these things in the artistic field. But still, I had no clue what it was. You didn't you know, know how to reach? No, space. I mean... If one doesn't know how to reach that space, they have an idea of what that space is. Okay. I had no idea that there was uh, that industry. Okay. okay. You know? So growing up so you as... Were, you, sorry. So you were a, a bit as blind as mom and dad. In a sense. Yes. Because mom and dad had this talent. talent. And yes. And creatives and artists. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they yeah. didn't know what to... Hold you know, that I, thought. That, let's hold that thought. Cool. I'm just going to write it down quickly. Mom... Dad. Cool. <laughs> so I remember. Cool. We're going to go to an ad break. Cool. Your media, where you are. The show goes on with Noni. Brings the business of the arts to center stage. I should read out loud again. This is punishment. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Sit down, pour a glass, and take a journey through the fascinating lives of some of South Africa's most influential names as they transcribe the parts of their story you won't read about in the papers. Through casual and candid interview, Tiamo and her guests hope to make their life story and experience a practice and experience a practical blueprint you can apply in your own life. The Transcript with Tiamo. Subscribe on YouTube, listen on any good podcast platform, or find it on www.yourmedia.co.za. Your Media, hashtag where you are. Your Media, where you are. You dance to your own tune. The show goes on with Noni, brings the business of the arts to center stage. Alrighty, so we are back. Uh, Justin, yes. carry on. Jog my memory. <laughs> we were talking about how you um, didn't know. Yes, I had. And mom and dad also being in that in that space so you were in this similar space yeah and so but how how was it for you that you were able to now say oh wait a minute yeah i've got it too but i can do something about it yeah so maybe let's go back a little bit yeah. when i was younger going to school it was a bit tough for me because my twin brother and i have dyslexia and okay. with dyslexia you can't read and write like normal people you know it's a it's it's very challenging to read you know because words mm -hmm. jump around and when you write you either skip words or you jumble up sentences so it didn't make sense so when we went to school and we had to do public reading uh -huh. it was quite tough because we couldn't read and we would we struggle so much and kids would laugh at us and teachers would humiliate us and it was so bad that you know i lost my confidence completely okay and i thought i was stupid because that's what the teachers would call yeah. us that you're dumb you know uh, you know I mean, uh, but you're a whole educator you this know is what you do this is what you tell kids this is what you tell kids. Yeah. Wow, man yeah it was yeah. tough man then when that was happening Fortunately, my twin brother and I, and I'm so blessed to have him, because we we had far, we were talented. Yes. In different things, mm. you know. So we, I remember having a conversation with him that show school is so tough, you know, and these kids laugh at us. And yes. it was in primary school, and we say, you know, 
we should humiliate them with what we are good at. Come on. Yes, please. You, you know? <laughs> and yeah, we were very athletic. So no one could run faster than my brother and yes. I. And Come on. we loved gymnastics. We still do, you know, my brother and I kick up geek out on gymnastics and all that stuff that yeah. we need to go back. We still can do it, you know, yeah. when you hang out, we do. We, you know, we were good at programming yeah. in primary school. So we'd build our own computers and we could draw, we could paint. And we thought, you know, we're just going to lean into all the things we are good at. Yeah. Um, and yeah, show off with that because the school stuff was tough, you know. Then I went through school, got to high school. I repeated every grade, you know. Really? Yeah, I mean, with dyslexia, imagine. I knew everything that mm. they were teaching. But the <laughs> teachers couldn't pick up that. My issue is not knowing. Yes. My issue is when I have to express myself in writing, it was tougher. Yeah. You know, it made no sense. So I failed. Then they would push me for the second year. Okay. So I was in matric when I was 21 and I uh, had my 21st birthday at the tuck shop. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. You used to joke, like, you know, being a kid, you used to joke about stuff like that. You yeah. Know, having like this kid who's like 21, well, not a kid anymore, but, you know, you're still in school and yeah. 21. And we used to joke about it, but we didn't know that you looking for me looking back yeah it, it's like you don't understand what that person was going through yeah as much as it was you know you could have a smile on your face about it mm. and you literally went home and you were hurt about it but yeah, also the school system tough. you felt jarred but also the school system like the school Good. system couldn't they have had like uh stuff in place where they could identify yeah, I mean, Kids you must... Like that. It's because there's technicons, right? Yeah. But also technicons in our, in our, in our country are so stigmatized to be like, ah, oh, dom. Oh, dom. I understand. Mm. But I, and it's like, no, it's, I'm maybe good with my hands and not with my, you know, my, 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 my hand and my brain. Mm. My brain but they should teach, teach yes. to identify children like that. Exactly. And, yeah. and they should point the parents to the right direction. Like, mm. it has to start at school where they, yes. they're like, but I guess we it's hard feel for like boys as well because for boys, they tend to think of what we stole to. That's why you are not focused. Yeah. You're just naughty. They're just boys. They're naughty. Mm. And they're that time, through. my brother and I were not naughty. Mm. We were the sweetest kids yeah. with just uh, learning challenges through mm. dyslexia. You know, but you must also remember that. Well, I'm a bit old, so I'm I'm from the generation that's not far from uh, the struggle. Okay. You know, right. and you must remember that when the country and the NC came to power, and education was made accessible, um, the most important thing wasn't considered that the teachers that were teaching us went through Bantu education, you know, so they were not educated enough to educate yes, uh, to the right to, the right way. So the kids that okay. benefited and, and got to learn the right way were kids that didn't have challenges like some of us. So yes. maybe some kids' challenges were at home, it was tough, so that trouble spilled over to school, yes, you know. Okay. Our schools, Esoweto or Eldorado Park, mm didn't have they were not educated enough to engage at that level mm, okay. you must remember the country was coming from such a dark cloud yes. and here we are we are free yeah for, you know that education yeah i i mean they themselves were oppressed by a system mm. as well. And they got their education through a system that didn't want to empower them. So their way of empowering us was destroying at some point or was only identify conventional learning students. Yeah. So I have no anger towards the education system. My, I just have... I just have concern around what kind of education are the teachers getting yes you know mm -hmm. and when i look mm -hmm. at 
the schools I went to, Farisane, Omvere Zandivo, the schools I went to in Soweto. I mean, at some point, we were not even learning in English. You know, then you pick up English so much later in life, you know, and it was okay because that syllabus and that system they were teaching was approved by the system, you know. And when you look at the education system, it's very easy to say, yeah, you know, the country is free. We've got yeah. freedom. It's been 94. Why aren't you, in, why are we not investing in education? Why yeah. are we not doing this? What are we, why are we not doing that? Think about it this way. Before our freedom, the system of this country was geared to empower 10%. And the 90% is us, right? Mm. Then in 94, here you go, you've got freedom. In a system that is made for 10%. Yes. How can that system carry 90%, 90%. when it's made for 10%? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes, we could have done better, you know? But think about it. This system that oppressed us was built over 400 years. Mm. Yeah? Do you think... 30 years or 35 years will dismantle Never. a perfectly Short. engineered and designed system perfectly to put us down. And, and, and the investment to that thing was incredible. Yeah. Hold that thought again, because we're going cool. into <laughs> a break. Cool. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> you see, I told you, we are Flopping because engagement here. Yeah. Oh wow. Your media where you are. All goes on with Noni. Brings we all know some of the arts to center stage. Nomiences. Mo chats to the best in local health and fitness experts in an effort to help you achieve your aesthetic fitness and health goals. Subscribe on YouTube, listen on any good podcast platform, or find it on www.yourmedia.co.za. Your media, hashtag, where you are. <laughs> Your media, where you are. Brings the business of the arts to center stage. Okay. Yeah, no more interruptions. Now now we're going home run. Zahamba manj. So now you're going to tell us how it is that you then started your journey in filmmaking, yeah. artistry, painting, all of that. Yeah. Because like you're multi-talented. Yeah. I mean, I like to say uh, the way we grew up, we had to life was full of creativity you know and at some point we had our mom raising us and she was a single parent and it was very clear to us uh, that everyone should contribute to the household you know yeah. when I was 12 but it wasn't it was a beautiful experience Come I didn't have yes how uh, earn money at 12 yes 12 years old yes Oh so, so, yeah, I don't speak. I want to ask you how old you are because I'm just like you're talking <laughs> about apartheid era. You say you're not that far, then you must contribute at 12. It's, it's like, like it's not heard of right now. I'm very yeah. interested in knowing <laughs> contribution. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no, don't I mean, it was, <laughs> it wasn't, it was an unspoken uh, conversation. Okay. By realizing where we are, you know, my mom was unemployed. It was four kids mm. and her, and it was tough, mm. you know. So um, the way we were brought up uh, with love, you know, we were taught hard work and we saw hard work yes. and it was natural to us. You know, I mean, we grew up at my house, we used to sell 
uh, amasonja okay. uh, mupani worms yes. so we'd pack mupani worms in these packs and go sell them or walk from Pinville to Shawela to from Lamini, Snawani and all of that. Yeah. So then when we were 12, we were already doing that. And my brother and I were very curious people. And there used to be markets in Clip Town. Okay. And yes. we went to the market, we had a bit of money and we bought computer parts and we put them together. And by luck, it wasn't by how smart we were. Mm. It worked. You know, then that affirmed us that wow we can actually do these computer things so that became our obsession so that's okay. how it started then. yeah that's how it started that's, then okay. my mom's friend from her teenage years you know uh had a husband who worked in it and we once visited them yes. and you know we saw that and we were like you know what this is what we want to do and very quickly my brother and I started a, a business where we fixed people's computers in the neighborhood. Okay. For 150. Yeah, for 150 rands. Oh. And we were... <laughs> uh, 150. Yeah, and we were naughty and yeah. creative. So we got hold of a virus called Win32. Okay. And you install it in a computer and it duplicates files over and over and over. And in 32 days, the computer crashes. But restoring it is easy. <laughs> So we would install that into people's computers so, so that, that can come back. <laughs> every month we've got 150 guaranteed, right? Then, and these anyway, are dyslexic twins, guys. Like, yeah, these the are brain. these are dumb kids. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, because dyslexia <laughs> wasn't something we knew then. Yes, you were just dumb kids then. Yeah, we were dumb. <laughs> and look at them. Then yeah, we did that, and you know that that became a passion so much that i thought this is the career i'm gonna get into mm, uh, okay you know it you know then the challenges of education and how it killed my my confidence in in education and being able to go study it and get the degree or you know the qualification made me insecure Okay. then I, I looked into my other skills yeah you know and i could draw you know then we would do house signs for people okay. for, uh, you know 4088 that yeah. that was our house number at my mom's house All right. then we we do those for 50 rand or whatever people, it was if people saw those signs from your house and then were like yes did that, yeah, we did like the, yes then nice. we charge people to yeah. do that that was our income then we'd sell we used to sell cologne then yeah then we, has, has 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 yeah, yeah. no completely <laughs> you know then we I, I had a huge passion for fixing cars so I, I did that too okay then we used to design uh t-shirts oh, well this doesn't have a design yeah. but would would have a designs and would make our own t-shirts yeah. and put them at the spaza shops do, do you guys are you guys the generation that had um public phones that were in containers yes oh you are yes. too young no 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 we yeah. are that generation i use, yeah. I use the public yeah. phone in the container yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, so, a telco in the yes that's a public phone so <laughs> uh yeah we used to make our t-shirts and put them there okay got it contained got it contained yeah. and people would buy and whilst we we're in that journey because we loved design and art and uh -huh. all of that our life was just that um by chance we met our mentor okay you know who came to our house because he wanted to buy an ipod because we had ipods okay you know because they didn't want my panda yeah i mean money was coming <laughs> in yeah we had <laughs> yeah completely so then he saw what we did and he thought wow that's amazing you guys did this and yeah and through him we got into advertising Mm. um without the qualifications because luckily uh advertising is more about your portfolio rather than do you have metric did you go to oh, yes. triple a okay. do you have this yes. do you have that you know whereas if i pursued a career in it i don't think my skills would have earned me the opportunity to work yeah. for maybe even standard bank because they've got a benchmark mm. they need you Certain know criteria yeah, yeah yeah so we got into advertising 
and advertising is a beautiful teacher. You learn so many things. And amongst that was photography okay. and film, you know, and yeah. And and I want to know. really, really just started there yeah. now. Like, oh, yeah, and that was modeling, 2009. Like, you guys, like modeling, you and your best friend, Boya, yeah. uh, your, your brother. I think I, yeah. I told you this. The first time I saw you was in a Woolies catalog mm. where you were shot with your brother. Yes, because everyone, you guys became the coolest kids, the actually. Coolest and you kids. were in music videos with the coolest gear. With, uh, what's that like, guy? Baba Buddy Flutes. You were also in the music yes. video. I don't think we were, but I think they reference our style. They reference your style a lot, eh? Yeah. And that, and I saw you on a billboard the other time, mm. but it was back then. Back and I'm then, like, yeah. these guys, they are making as um so cool, so nice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Look, we're chatting to him, and we're just saying, like, and you're letting us know about dyslexia, your challenges, mm. um, growing up with a mother who was also a father and then not mm. having money. And at 12, you had to be, you know, you had to go and make money. And then here you are, boom, you become the coolest sensation but, um, and still are <laughs> like your life. And so cool. So cool. Your but life. Um, and our party, like, <laughs> so yeah, I think, thank you for, for your kind words. I think, what created what we did was self-reliance mm. because, you know, being from where we are from and having not had access to multiracial schools yeah. and all the stuff that makes other kids cool, yeah. you know, the way we spoke English wasn't cool enough for the St. David's cares. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're not <laughs> what's going know? on. We are you know coming to our party. And yeah, so so having grown up the way we did and trying to fit into the circles here where we were now working and living was tough because uh, people are clicky. Mm. You know, if you if we if you were not in the same class with them or if you were not in the same socials you know you are not accepted yeah. so what we did for for ourselves was you know rely on ourselves and create our own cool yeah. that we think is cool, cool. you know no, and not try totally fit cool. into no, totally cool. you know thank you <laughs> no. i mean no, is... that that aesthetic was very much vuyo yeah you know vuyo was so sharp with his fashion when when we started photography my brother and I were not into fashion yeah. so much. I mean, our best friend was very much into fashion. But when we started... And I went to the same high school now. Yeah, Northcliffe High. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> he actually knows my brother. So uh, Who's your brother? Who's in Piwe. Uh, but I'll um, ask him. I don't think Tupi didn't... They knew each other. Yeah, they were and, not friends. But they were friends. I, uh. I don't know. Like, you know, acquaintance, Namangamangali, got many friends, got many circles. Um, yeah. At one point, they were all hanging out together at some yeah. point and all that stuff. And then, you know, people grow apart yeah. or whatever. Will was a cool dude. No, he was very cool. Even yeah. his school uniform. Yeah. I mean, he was that the kid that, yeah. that used to come. Kingy, what's that? Carry more. Carry more. Yeah. Carry more, but in the front, you know. And then his pants, his school pants didn't look normal. Yeah, his yeah. His school shoes were not normal. Yeah. His jersey... It looked like he also altered his blazer to just yeah. do the damn I thing. Also, never found out. I feel like boys yeah, they did that they a did lot. That as well. I wasn't uh, when I was there. I wasn't a cool guy. Yeah, you know, okay. I was very much a geek. <laughs> and everyone, I remember in metric, I was drawing something, and one of the guys said, "My just to start draw." <laughs> you know, as like if it's a childish thing. Yeah. And now look at you. Hey. <laughs> so now I want to ask. Yeah. Um, what did I want to ask? Lord have mercy. I just got pregnancy brain. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I wanted to, I wanted to. Uh, okay. I want to ask. I'll come uh, back. With your craft. Mm. Uh, I was having a chat with this other colleague of ours. Mm. And he was telling us about how South Africans are not patriotic when it comes to our art. Mm. When it comes to our craft. Mm. Uh, we always consume other people's art. Mm. And we look at our photographers and our filmmakers. Mm. Uh, we, the question came out, Jorge, how do we package South Africa mm. and sell it to the world? 
Mm. Because in your art, when I, I'm a huge fan. I think I told you this Thank you. way back when I saw you taking a photo of yourself in a mirror. I think yeah. I still have that photo. Yeah. Um, Thank you. It was, you were telling a story of who you are, where you come from. Mm. Uh, but how, as South African creatives, how do we package South Africa and sell mm. it to the world and let them consume us as mm. we consume their art? Mm. I think uh, the beginning of that is self-love, you know, and self-love is the most important thing. And I can understand how people or some of our people don't love themselves the way they should or they don't want to see themselves the way they are. They are. Mm. Because for the longest time, before my brothers and I, started I see a different you and we're not the saving grace of this but we contributed in the shift you know is when you look at a magazine or national geographic so the internet if you google Soweto South Africa or the news is speaking about where we are from yeah. mostly the images you see are negative yeah. You know, you see images of starving kids, you yes, know, no not, electricity, like that, you know, so. and all those <laughs> things. And the more you see that, the more it becomes your reality. Yes. You know, yes. the more you see, for example, Americans portraying themselves with power and grace. Yes. And, and that's superior. We end up seeing them that way. Yeah, we only think the American way is the so, best way yes. and here's the twist the american way and european way and the rest of the world come here to look for inspiration mm. and they take exactly. inspiration here and reproduce it that side and make as if it's, it's theirs, theirs. Yes. and it's not so, yeah it's not you know and look at something like as beautiful as it is black is king Yes. Everything is ours. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can you take all of our culture and our texture and present it back to us? Yes. And you know, as if crazy. you can present it better than yes. us. Yes. And we go nuts for that. Yeah. You know, where we then um, sort of kind of like, when we represent ourselves, we want to be them. Mm. In time, they're like, no, no, no. And we yeah. run away from We want to we be are. you. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's about high time we, we yeah. see ourselves. So, you know, it's important as a country and as a people to love ourselves. And we can, we can simplify it and say individuals need to love themselves. Yeah. Love yourself as you are, you know. For me, the biggest shift that happened was accepting myself. Yeah. In in this macro space like yes. being in the north and i don't speak like guys from saint speak or saint david's and whatever yeah. then you know i used to be shaky about it or insecure about it then I, i'm like i don't want to be this actually how i speak is cool yeah, yeah. i'm gonna me say too. there yeah there yeah <laughs> See, i'm gonna say there yeah <laughs> Serious? Not that. No, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> and why should I break my mouth trying to speak in a way that I don't speak? Yeah. You know, and, what you're saying, you it's know? like when I look at your work, mm. uh, we were watching the Ingrams ad and how you really portrayed the mm. black, like our black skin, yes. our skin as beautiful yeah thank you you are who you are how every like the, your direction how everyone touched themselves like mm. every every shot had intent yes thank you every shot was intentional to say something yes. yeah it wasn't yeah. just there because oh no mm. Kobisa, because you're dry no there, yeah. there was a storytelling even in just you know, I'm advertising running. in Ingrams. Yes, I'm in Ingrams. Who's exactly. the Tobisa? What's the Wafaga like? Even in, like Iswafi. Iswafi yeah. means albino. You know, yeah. where people like that aren't also seen. Mm. Yes. Wuti, they are they are human too, and she's beautiful, and she's there, and she, you know, I just I really, yeah. Like the the end, times. Had, yeah. All of the all, all of, of the faces, faces. like you just yeah. had. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's important that I mean, it, I'm an artist, and it's my duty, and it's our duty to rewrite this narrative mm. 
you know, it's our duty to contribute to our own culture in a meaningful way because those that are maybe gatekeepers are not going to do that for us. Yeah. You know, National Geographics or all the other big media houses that uh, bring outside photographers and directors or whoever to come mm -hmm. tell our story will never be, um, will never feel the agency to do that the right way. Yes, to so, tell true story. Yeah, so now when we have acquired the skill and when we are now occupying the space, it is our duty to right those wrongs. You know, it's our duty to contribute to the media mm. in a meaningful way, in, yes. the, in a way that yes. we want to be seen. Meaningful way. Way. You yes. know, so in the work that I do, that is my intention. Mm. You know, uh, you know, it's important to me to contribute to my culture. Yes. You know, the way I want to be seen. You know, I remember being young, seeing ads, and mothers are dancing, and you know, it's so awkward. Or they being caricatures and I couldn't see any of my people in that. Maybe when I was young, I didn't engage it the way I do now. Yeah. But when I look back, you can see that someone creating that communication has no agency and intention to portray our culture the right way with sensitivity, with pride, yeah. with love and all that it needs, you know? Mm. And now when we occupy the space, we can't play around. Yes. Mm. You know, we yes. have to fix that problem. Mm. You know? Yeah. I just mm. want to ask you how important, we were talking about it actually earlier before we actually even started the show. Mm. Um, and we were talking about being in the industry and um, having passion, right? Mm. But then also, <laughs> he's smiling at me like, oh, girl, you want to spend another hour on the show. No, okay. <laughs> and you were, you, were, you were expressing how, you, you know, you can have your passion, mm. but don't just allow that to be your life. Mm. Because you can't just feed on passion. You also have to, which is the mistake, I guess, we make mm. as human beings um, to want to be a musical theater performer and then, bah, COVID hits you and it's like, you said, now what you going to do? Yeah. Because you have not tapped into the other artistic Evenings. side of yourself. Yeah. You've been putting those to sleep. How important is it that we break out of that? It's mm. not to say that we don't love what we do, but with the way that our industry is in this country, yeah, we need to be able to, hey, economize from all other areas. Mm. You know, dancer this way, dancer in the front, dancer at the back. Yeah, it's a lovely question and thanks for bringing it up. I think before I get into that, I need to say I learned the importance of making it clear that my views are my opinion. Yes. It's not the only way to do it. Mm. I feel that for my journey, it was important for me to not be a purist because I couldn't afford to do that. You know, I've struggled enough, you know, and life could be better if I made choices that afforded me the opportunity to pursue what I love from a comfortable place, you know? Mm. So for me, Bending the principle is very important because I am an artist and I love and want to live and just do art. But we live in a capitalistic world where for my life, it's not realistic. You know, I'd, I want to be a father, you know, yes. I want to have a home for my children. I want to be able to have a car in this capitalistic life so that I can commute easier you know i want to be able to put bread and food okay. for myself and my children and my family and my wife yes. you know and unapologetically i love things i want yeah, to look course, i want to been, look good hey you were a you know? training brother for a long time you know? come on now come we on know now. we, we know, know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I i want a fancy car. Yes. I want a fancy holiday. Mm. I want to. I want to live. I want to live and not be deprived, of course. You know. Yeah. And for me, that meant that 
I had to compromise, mm, you know, okay. and do what had to be done for life to be comfortable and find the balance. You know, I worked yes. in a shoe shop, you know, then I worked at a call center and it was tough. Then after work, I would go home and draw, do illustrations and do all that stuff. But I know that month end, I can buy myself the art supplies I like. You know, ah, I can buy yes. myself the camera that I've been dreaming of, you know, mm -hmm. and the camera that later helps my career. Of course. I can buy myself a laptop, yeah. you know. For me, I felt that if I pursue my passion starving, it would be hard. I'll resent it. Yes. I'll hate it, you know. It seem pointless. Yeah, and we must also acknowledge that not all art can earn you a living. Yes. You know, and it's unfair, maybe, but sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves mm. and look at the path you're choosing and say, okay, this is the path I'm choosing. It means that I'm not going to have a salary. I'm going to earn from 10 episodes, 3.5 3 per episode. And after that, it's a scramble. Yes. If that's what you want, you need to be honest with yourself that, okay, this is what it's going to be. And maybe don't aspire for more. Don't expect yes, don't, more. Don't live beyond your means. Don't yes. live beyond the means. Because, if, yeah, if you choose a path, choose it with honesty. Yes. Look at what it comes with mm. and say, you know what, I'm okay with this. Yeah. I wish I could have had this conversation with you before I went to study. Uh, also, <laughs> it's not late. It's never too late. It's, it's never late. It's actually never, ne ne never too late. So sorry, sorry. Um, we also have, uh, you know, that, that struggle where you're an artist and then there's a stigma of, you know, like, like you say, you, 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 you sold Mampani worms. Mm. You were selling stuff from the back, uh, from the back of your boot. Colognes. Uh, Colognes from the back of your boot. Mm. Um, you know, and, and you worked in a call center. Did yes. you say that? Yeah, you call that, center, right? yes. I did, yeah. You know, there's that, there's that yeah. mentality where it's like, yeah. it's, it, it almost feels like a stigma to be like, ah, oh, then that's going to be, that it's going to look like to the directors or other mm. artists or people that want to employ you or have employed mm. you that you're not serious about it. About mm. But they don't understand that maybe, maybe it's just not enough what I'm earning. Mm. And in order for, for me to pursue what I love doing, then mm. I need to sell cologne from the boot, mm. go to the call center because go to a shoe shop, you know, because I do want to go to Dubai. Hello. Mm. You know, but not without the long weave and stuff like that. Yeah, I just want to go to Dubai. <laughs> also, but, the know, weave is okay you know, if that's what okay. you want. But, you know, I need other things in life. Yeah. Um, and like you, like you say, Disneyland. yes, you want to be a father. Mm. I find that in the industry, people sometimes then have, have children late mm. because mm. of that thing of I can't afford. And if I, mm. if I leave... Mm. You know, I'll miss out. Like for me, I'm I, I feel lucky that COVID happened and I was like, Hey, this is my it's job. Time. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's time and I've got a partner who's there for me and yeah. you know, I, I'm I'm lucky in that sense. I, I, I think yeah, I can yeah. say the word lucky. Yeah. You know, um but I see other other men and women who mm. are like, Yo, I really want a family mm. but I'm an artist and mm. yeah, yeah, you girl. know, because we wanna be able to afford those things and mm. I, I I don't know what can happen for what must happen for how mm. where we get to a point where we we don't need to think that way and we can also live yeah, yeah. Well I think I, I'm late for things like we yeah. it's like we're late bloomers oh it's so like you look like <laughs> Oh, you're yeah, like dancing yeah. now. You want children? Yeah. You're serious. Now you're serious. maybe people are looking at we me now cool and going, guys. maybe people are going, How's it? So cool, you, know, no, no. you know, she's grown, yeah. she's grown. Look, she's pregnant now, she's grown. And it's like, No, dude. Mm. <laughs> and people are still looking at me like, And then, yes, but they don't mm. understand the witty. We can't have those other things that are, yeah. Mm. Also, I think the journey to what we want to be and want to achieve is not linear, mm. you know. For other people, my journey was my journey. You know, I had to sell Mopani worms. I loved it. Yeah. I had to fix cars and computer. It. Yeah, I loved it. My upbringing was amazing. Yes. Yeah. I honestly didn't struggle. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 
you know and all those experiences are amazing for me now because mm-hmm. i lived them and they are a resource i can use yes you know so people need to know that the journey to what you want to be is not linear yeah but if you want it to be linear it can you know it's just the choices we make you we just need to be honest with yourself yeah. and not hate the universe and yourself mm. for decisions you made exactly. you know and not that being an artist is a bad decision it's not, not no. look at someone like black coffee mm. 10 years ago or 20 years ago we would have said a dj what yeah. the hell is that yeah. but look at him now mm. you know and yes. he chose his path it's making it lucrative it wasn't lean it was hard he had yes. to he was uh, my mom always says to us no one is born at the top you know yes. you work your way to the top yeah whatever it takes you know and you were also saying like mm. you were saying you can't work from a place of experience of a, of of what was it again? It's inspiration. inspiration. You work from a place of, of intention. intention. Yeah. Explain. I mean, for me, uh, you know, my journey led me to, for me, knowing that I can't wait for inspiration. Yeah. I must be led by intention because mm-hmm. intention to me is being clear on where I want I love to hearing go. hearing this twice, guys, already. Like, you could you tell know? the story over and over again. Like, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Please carry on. Sorry. You know, <laughs> for me, intention is being clear of where you want to go. Yeah. You know, if I know where I want to go, I'll know what it's going to take to get where I need to be. Yeah. You know, and even if it means that I'm going to go to my studio and just paint, you know, I may not have the inspiration now, but it's going to find me my intention is to paint. Yeah, my intention is to paint. Because you, know? you said what? It's like a car needs petrol. Yeah, yeah. For me, inspiration <laughs> so, is like yes, petrol. It's petrol. Yes. It's petrol. And I don't want to be dependent on petrol because sometimes I may not have petrol. Mm. But with intention, intention is the goal. Yes. That's where I want to go. That's where I want to be. And for me... Also, you know, I, I read this beautiful thing to, that says the destination is the journey, you know, and sure. the destination is the journey. It was It's so empowering because we work so hard waiting for an end result, yes. you know, and sometimes yes. the end result is not celebrated the way we wish exactly. it's celebrated. And if you refocus to the journey and enjoying the journey, Whatever you do, they like it, they don't like it, it's irrelevant. It's not going to kill you. No. Because your journey is... Is what's most important. Yeah, you know, and finding that was so empowering because I could see, I applied that in my life and it shifted so much for me, you know. Not that I was a person that needed much affirmation. Yeah. Lucky I've got my amazing twin brother who we Your affirm each other family That's yeah. cool, basically. <laughs> you know it's, and my amazing partner yeah you know and yeah so the the journey is where you should focus yeah you know that is so beautiful oh yeah. um, man i could talk to you all day no, like okay. even the way you're just so <sighs> yeah cool water <laughs> Yeah, cool what cool waters. He's got my little biggie here. Uh, just she's like, <laughs> I'm listening. Cool my mama, my mama's like, my mom is in a zen place. <laughs> <laughs> I can oh. feel she's moving differently. I'm just like, yes, honey, are you <laughs> taking that in? <laughs> it's gonna be a powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, justice. So it being um youth month. Yeah. Um. I don't know actually what I want to ask. I don't want to be a cliche and be... Cliches are okay. <laughs> Nothing is wrong. Um, also being a person that says you are a generation very close to the oppressed mm. times. Mm. Um, this month, what does it mean to you? And does it have... Does your work also mm. have any... It, it is six, June 16. Mm. Um, 
does it have any influence on any of your work or do you find the inspiration elsewhere or because i mean mm. most of your work is life experience based mm. I'm, i'm guessing yeah yeah because there's so much so much soil from mm. there mm. a lot yeah yeah i mean for me this month the youth month and june 16 are definitely important because um it's that time for me to reflect uh and be appreciative of the opportunities we live yeah. with you know and if you look at the times in 76 and in that time how hard it was for them mm. relative to us yes. you know and the ridiculousness of how less impact we have with what we have mm. is you know those are the things that inspire me because that generation didn't have emails internet hey. or access to radio interviews the way we do our podcast mm. or facebook yes. and all of that our generation is so plugged in to the rest of the world yet sometimes we are not clear with our intention and yes. what is our purpose yeah. to move this uh, struggle forward mm. so that it's easier for the generation after yeah. us yes, this you know struggle. yeah and the the question can start with what is our struggle mm. right now right now yes. you know yes. and some have realized it and there's so many things being dismantled which is beautiful and mm. also in this time reflecting i'm able to identify the beautiful things we are now getting to unpack and think of yeah. mm. like sexuality mm. there's a whole revolution or place yes. or space where the sexual revolution is a revolution yes. yeah it and really you, is and when you look at where how, at, at like the time that it's happening in south africa it's almost like it's like oh africa it's almost like mm. it's late yeah we are behind but it's not late but it's not late because yeah. it's never it's too late. late it's beautiful that young men can now present themselves how they want mm. and young women mm. you know and it's okay and you'll be accepted and loved and yes there is still the challenges around Struggles, the topic yes. you know some it's harder to come out with it yeah. because of the stereotype you know it's but we are in a place where my father in his time if he was an other sexually yes. he couldn't talk about it never but it's now especially being gender yeah you know like, and all those so stereotypes little, you know those stereotypes i mean i mean i i know what being being a ve- or like just to be vendor as well is mm. you you looked at as supposed to be the extremely strong man yeah. very masculine woman yeah. down there i beat you i grab i'll you, tell you <laughs> our <type vibes. laughs> our praise song is tagazel in zula mm. praise song i'll say it in vendor first says the movenda mo pikwa na tombo tombo la bivanenda sar means that a vendor person gets cooked with a rock a rock will be cooked and ready or ripe if i don't yeah. know how to mm. describe it but a vendor person will never break they'll still be harder than a rock you know yeah and sure yeah i, I grew up in a family where there was no space to even engage if i was even different sexually yes. you know yeah. or to even open up to having a friend that is gay or yeah. that is trans mm. or you any know those, yes. any of those but now in this time we are in we can yeah mm. we can you know mm. and the 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 shift has gotten here mm. and how do we as this generation move it forward, forward. so yes. that it's easier so for me this month is all about not only that subject but reflect and find your position yes and f- identify what part of the struggle yes. now what are you, are you for? moving forward you know, within yes. your means yes then reach you know reach mm. Vanessa sure do you have anything more to because dude <laughs> KG's going to kill us when in luck sorry sorry to go over time no, no. no. it's okay it's your boy <laughs> um 
the one thing when I look at your work, mm. it is self-portraits, mostly. They're beautiful. Mm. Um, when I look at your work, okay, I'm, I'm very spiritual. So everything mm. I look at, Geshe, in this spiritual form. I'm very spiritual too. Are you telling stories of the people's spirits? There. Or mm. are you telling sp uh, stories of the people's flesh? Because there's a, mm. there's a, there's a photo where there's a boy mm. with like a chain mm. on top of his head. Mm. When I looked at that, um, when I see that, I see a person wearing his struggles on top of his head, struggles mm. of his soul, struggles of where he comes from. Mm. When you take your photos, are you telling stories of the soul or are you telling stories of the flesh? I want to know, even mm. uh, the palette, is it the palette? You call mm, it the, the palette. Yeah, color palette. The color palette of, yeah. of all your photos and all yeah. that you do, your the music videos, everything. Thank you. Like even Valentine, Stay True. Yeah. Uh, the palette there is, you're not telling stories of that for the eye. You're telling yeah. stories for the soul. Yeah. How do you tap into that and really stay true to that? Yeah, I mean, it comes back to intention, you know. And with intention for me, what fuels my creativity is capturing or creating feeling, you know. Um, you Please say that, that again. <laughs> you just said it so quickly. <laughs> feeling. How do you capture feeling? You, yeah, you can capture and create feeling. And for me, artistically, I uh, connect with feeling over idea. You know, because, you know, advertising is a beautiful teacher and advertising teaches us ideas. And ideas are powerful. But an idea is not powerful if it doesn't have feeling for me yeah. you know but i think if i can create a feeling it trumps anything it doesn't have to make sense with ideas but if it makes me feel a certain way that's enough you know so yeah i, I really that's that's what i like to do that's what i uh, i like to create um feeling and how I create it is by creating a space with a person that either I'm photographing or creating the yeah. photograph or the art with, yeah. where we are, I'm able to, te to get a glimpse of either their experience uh, that captures or distills a feeling that I want both of us to create, mm. you know? Yeah. And yeah, even with commercials, you know, the idea will come with the agency. And my duty is to give that feeling. Mm, and like the Holland Holland. Holland, Holland yeah. It's beautiful. You know it's a feeling. And for me and I'm a fan. <laughs> that, that that piece, you know, again, creatively my resource is my lived experience. When I got that brief, it's about a death, it's about this mother lost her husband and this. And I've went through that. Mm -hmm. My my grandmother lost my grandfather, you know, and I was there and I saw it and I felt it. Yes. And I'm familiar with all those nuances of that experience and that feeling. And when I create that, that's what I'm looking into that. Okay, this is this, this is yeah. this, this is this. And yeah, creatively, my resource is my lived experience. I love it. We've run out of time. But Justice, mm. it was amazing to have you in studio and thank to talk you. to you and to get to know you. And thank you for for being so comfortable to share. Thank you. Um, you know, even like personal things that people are very afraid to 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 speak about. As a cool kid, me knowing you as a cool kid, listen I'm here. Listen cool. here. Never thought cool kid was sending Amazon. Because you know, you think yeah. someone just steps into being cool. You yeah. think someone steps yeah. in to being the person that they present in the present moment in time. Yeah. And your story is so inspirational. Thank um, you. I wish you guys can come back. You know, like those cool kids, the way you yeah. guys do. Dude, I mean, I loved I loved seeing that. And I love seeing yeah. you guys everywhere. Even when they went out, mm. they were in sync in this group. And I, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's beautiful to also know because when we look at you, oh we saw like sometimes you go they're full of themselves. Meantime, mm. there was intention of 
we are African, we are Venda, we a story. are telling a story, um, mm. get to know us, even though it, the, the look mm. was intimidating, I would never step up to them and say, okay, Hello. guys, Dumelang, Dumelang. no, I'd just be like, <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> You guys should have a comeback, actually. Yeah. You should be like, remember I us mean, with these kids. I mean, we've grown. We've got families. But now you can got... do it with grown, with grown mentality. Come on now. I know you can do it. Challenge accepted. That's what you said. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we have for today. Any last words, Justice? Lead with love. Lead. Damn it. Yes. Sure. Mm. Ali? Yo, nakiti kering. After all. <laughs> All I can say is um, thank you for being an inspiration to our generation and mm. to the generation to come. That who you are is enough. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's all you need to be. You should break grounds and keep doing it. Yeah. Mm. Just yeah. keep on Please don't stop. flying that thank flag you. of who you are is enough. Yes. Yeah. Stay authentic. <laughs> and thank there you. we have it, everybody. Enjoy the youth month. You know, I mean, we still have a lot of days to go. Yeah. Live with intention, find your fight, and move forward with it. And, and you know, be inspired. But that's just the petrol, remember. Yeah. <laughs> have the intention, because that is the goal. That is the goal. <laughs> that is it from me, Nonim Konto, Spear of the Nation. When you're tuned into. The show goes on on your platform, your media, hashtag where you are. Balissa Robin. Bye. Why did you Your media, where you are. There are so many demands on you. Demands at home, in the boardroom, and in the bedroom. You have to be jack of all trades, wearing a different hat when the moment arrives.